Pokemon have just dropped a brand new patch for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The 1.3.2 update has gone live and with it comes a bunch of hints, leaks about the potential information that we could see in the DLCs as well as some future raid events that could come to the games very soon and we're going to cover all of the details in today's video. So this all started a couple of weeks ago when Pokemon put a notice up in regards to a new patch that would be expected to drop in regards to three particular moves that they outlined that had errors in them when they were traded from Pokemon Home into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The Pokemon that were affected were Cleaver, Sneasler and the Ahusuian Samurai with their respected signature attacks Diaclaw, Stone Axe and Ceaseless Edge. Those moves having a higher critical hit chance to them weren't actually meant to be like that in Scarlet and Violet. So this patch was specifically outlined to say we're going to resolve that and take that higher critical hit chance away from these moves. And it doesn't appear as though that has been changed in the game. So as we can come over to Twitter here, you can see the update from Pokemon Play Pokemon, put the update version 1.3.2 has been released for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. For details regarding this update, please visit the following link. So if we head over to this link here, we'll be able to have a look at the patch notes for this specific update. So you can see here version 1.3.2 released the 20th of June, which is today as of recording this video. Mechanic adjustments have been made for upcoming live tournaments, and that is actually all we get. So nothing more than that for the patch notes. So there isn't really too much to go on here. But like we mentioned before, this patch was specifically outlined to resolve the error in the descriptions for Diaclaw, which is Fatal Claw here, Stone Axe and uh, Ceaseless Edge, which all have a higher critical hit chance to them. So this description was meant to have been resolved with this update. This has not actually been done. Whether the mechanics themselves of these moves has been changed, which feels like it's more likely to have been done. They've just removed that mechanic from the moves, but the descriptions have actually stayed the same. So whether that would have caused issues between Home, Scarlet and Violet and Pokemon Legends Arceus, if you're trading between them or not, I don't know. But hopefully the mechanics going into Regulation D with this update have changed those moves. So they don't any longer have a higher critical hit rate. The issue is with the descriptions staying the same, it's going to be misleading for fans that kind of come into Scarlet and Violet a bit later. Maybe trade these Pokemon across and are a little bit confused why these moves aren't having a higher critical hit rate than they should do as the description says. So hopefully that is something that does get resolved in a future update but on the back of this we have had a lot of information in regards to this update so matt who is matt yukana over on twitter a very well-renowned data miner has come out with some big information on this patch update so per the official scarlet and violet news site this update was meant to change misleading move descriptions for diaclaw stone axe and ceaseless edge just before regulation D starts, which is on the 1st of July. So a couple of days away now. They did not update said move descriptions, but instead opted to leak DLC content. Nice. So you can see the descriptions of the moves are here. From the data mine itself, the user lashes out at the target with ruinous claws uh, aiming to land a critical hit. And they've all still got that land a critical hit option in the, uh, the move description. So that has not been removed like we've just mentioned. But Matt did go on to say there was a bunch of DLC DLC updates as well. So Matt also goes on to say the latest update for Scarlet and Violet has some adjustments to text and some additional for future DLC content, which is really interesting. So this new segment of text for the Mew battle, Mew is going all out against its formidable opponents. So this is a new battle text that's popped up in the recent update that indicates that Mew could be playing a big part in one of the DLCs. Maybe it is the Teal Mask and it's theorized that Mew could be one of the big partnering Pokemon that you use to go up against Ogapon, which is obviously the big bad or supposedly the big bad of the Teal Mask. We don't really know too much information yet, but it's interesting that this line of text has popped up in the data mines because obviously it will be a big part of the games and the description itself me going all out against its formidable opponent kind of stands out quite a bit from the regular text that we would normally get in the game it does feel like it's playing a big part a big role in it and why is Mew connected in Scarlet and Violet it hasn't even been mentioned before. So this is a really big hint at what potentially is to come. The other thing that was referenced by Matt in the data mines was the TM update. So TMs at the moment stop at 171. That's where we got up to. So we've got 171 TMs. 
but in the data mine we have new TMs listed, nothing specifically against these TMs, but TM 172 to 201, so like 30 new TMs are going to be added in the DLCs and the illuminate ability has been changed as well. So the illuminate ability was raises the likelihood of meeting wild Pokemon by illuminating the surroundings. This has now been changed in the recent update by illuminating its surroundings. The Pokemon prevents its accuracy from being lowered. So it has been changed. It actually has some use in competitive battles as well now, rather than just being used for kind of shiny hunting and stuff like that, that it's been used for in the past. So that's a big kind of hint. It's some big changes that we can see coming. So these are the two big ones here. Obviously the Mew information here is huge because I mean the implications for it being involved in one of the DLCs against one of the big bads that we're gonna come up against is pretty exciting because Mew hasn't really featured in any games recently as a kind of like partnering Pokemon to us. So it's really exciting to see that it finally will have a, a big role to play potentially from this text that we've got from the DLCs going forward. Uh, obviously as well with the TM update, it was to be expected, but it's nice to have kind of almost confirmation that we are gonna be getting new TMs when the DLCs do drop, as well as that interesting change to the Illuminate ability as well. And other interesting news is Matt goes on to further say that the update, uh, the description of the Mightiest Mark has changed. So the old description of the Mightiest Mark, a mark for Pokemon caught in a seven star terror raid battle. And the new description is a mark for an especially mighty Pokemon. Uh, will we be able to get the Mightiest Mark through other means in future? This is interesting because I was like, oh, maybe that they do something like they did in Sword and Shield with the, the, the Max Mushrooms, the Mushroom Soup, and you can get the Gigantamax mark that way. But it doesn't appear so because Coup, Riddler Coup, are very well-renowned, very reliable. Uh, Leek has come out and said, nope, but something different. So uh, it has some role to play in it and whether or not it is linked to all of the theories about the masks, a new mechanic, the Mightiest Marks, have a new form attached to them for these Pokemon that have the Mightiest Mark can have a separate transformation in regards to terrestrialization somehow, which we don't know about just yet. And then on the back of that, we had a post from Riddler Koo, uh, and it was just this, a shush emoji with a picture of Mewtwo and then the Mightiest Mark. So is this a big hint at what is to come? Are we, are we finally gonna get a legendary raid, seven star raid for Mewtwo and also Mew as well? I would say definitely because how else are we going to get Mew on the games, especially if we're going off this text? That would make a lot of sense to me right now. Now, whether Koo's not exactly saying it directly like it's going to be Mew too, but it potentially could be Mew too and Mew. If we go back to the Sword and Shield first legendary Dynamax raid that we ever had, it was for Mew too. So that could potentially be something that we see replicated in Scarlet and Violet. But the fact that we've got this line of text from Matt that he's pulled from the data mines. Mew playing a big part in the potential DLCs, it kind of makes me feel like Mew is gonna be the Pokemon that we are gonna get prior to the DLCs dropping for a legendary raid. But again, we might get both of them as well. But that is all of the information from the latest update. Not really too much in regards to it affecting the games. Like the actual reason for it was to change the descriptions of those moves and the mechanics. It may have changed the mechanics. I would imagine it probably has changed the mechanics. But outside of that, we got a bunch more information, which is actually really exciting going forward and gets me very hyped for Seven Star Terror Raids. Mew and Mew 2, if we do get them in Seven Star Terror Raids, are gonna be extremely difficult. Their move pools are huge, their stack, their base stats are a lot higher than what we faced before. So it's gonna be extremely challenging to go up against these, but exciting and something I'm looking forward to building for, especially if they do get announced. The other thing to mention before we just end here today is that the Gimme Ghoul event is running until this Sunday. So this Sunday night uh, on the 2nd of July, the Gimme Ghoul chess form event that was announced part of the Nintendo Direct uh, segment with Pokemon in uh, it will be ending this Sunday. So it means that potentially there is room for an announcement after this event ends of a new seven star terror raid event. Will we be getting the Del Fox event that was shown and then pulled because of the issues that we've had recently and then the Rillaboom event? I feel like we do need these Pokemon because they need to have the mightiest marks. We need to get these Pokemon with their mightiest marks regardless of them being available through home or not. I think the mightiest marks are gonna play a huge role in the Teal Mask and giving these Pokemon 
the ability to terrestrialize lies to change with the masks in some shape, way or form. The Mightiest Mark feel way more important than just being a kind of like a token gift for an event that's running. There seems to be like an underlying theme to these. And I really do believe that we will get the Del Fox and Rillaboom, but whether or not we get them this coming week or not, hopefully we do. It seems like all the issues with the Terror Raids have been resolved now. So I'm hoping that this Sunday night, we can put a video out saying, Del Fox is back or even more exciting me or me too are coming to the games next week and that would be a big challenge but let's see what happens let me know what you think down in the comment section below if you've enjoyed today's video please drop a like it does massively help the video and do subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content that is all for today but we will be back very soon with more updates and more Pokemon content very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves more importantly than anything and I'll see you all later so until then take care and bye-bye.